in time. You are not listening to this message by chance or mistake, but by the grace of God. We preach the gospel to the masses and help gear up everyone with the word of truth, the Bible. Please stay tuned and I pray the grace of God fall upon you as you listen. Amen. This is GRM, Gospel Revelation Ministry. Welcome to Gospel Revelation Ministry this Monday. We focus on spreading the Word of God, addressing worldly topics biblically. You can learn more about this ministry at grministry.org. I am your host, Yinka Martins, and this ministry's pastor is Pastor Joshua at Wale. Good day, brethren. We continue with the series of elects and the privilege of elects. Today, we are talking about the testimony of our conversion. The Bible reference today is the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1 to 10. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Ekir, of the person who were in Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin. To mourn the wars of the Lord came in in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, the king of Judah, in the thirteen years of his reign. He came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, the king of Judah, unto the ends of the eleventh year of Jedekiah, the son of Josiah, the king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Then the words of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nation. Then said I, Ah, the Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, for it shall go to all whom I have sent you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have thus day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull out, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Jeremiah was a very young boy when God called him, and he was having a dialogue with Holy Spirit and God in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1 to 10. And God was telling him that before he was born, he already called him and made him a prophet of the nation. So Jeremiah, in his life, will never forget that encounter. If you have an encounter with the Lord, and you have an encounter with Holy Spirit, today is to remind us that many things that we in the church are doing Many people go to church. When you ask them, what is your testimony of your encounter with the Lord? They will tell you, oh, my grandfather has been going to the same church. My father took us to the church. My mother could have been in that church for 50 years, 40 years. That is not what we are saying. You see, the book of John chapter 3, this other guy was dialoguing with Nicodemus. He said, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus could not understand it. Jesus guy was frustrated with them. That book of John chapter 3, verse 9 and 10 was saying, look, you call yourself as a leader of the society, as the most educated, the Sadducees and Pharisees but you do not understand simple things of the world. Because unless we know exactly that day we have an encounter with God, then we are not sure whether we are born again Christian. You see, an experience you cannot forget. You see, Jeremiah could not forget that experience. And in the book of prophet Isaiah, although he was a big prophet from chapter 1, 
chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. But in chapter 6, from verse 1 to 9 and 10, he said, the day you had died, he said, I saw God seated on the throne. His life transformed because he had an encounter with God and he had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. He will never forget that experience. He will be reliving it every day. What is your own experience? What is your own encounter? If you cannot avoid the specific date, can you say the period or time that you have an encounter with the Holy Spirit and your life transformed? That is what we are talking about, testimony of our conversion. If you don't have that testimony, then we need to check ourselves again. Am I a born-again Christian? Am I a churchgoer? This is the issue that we need to know because you must know when the day certain things happen to you that you never forget. You don't forget your birthday. It's the same thing. It's the day of your birth when you become born again Christian. You may not know exact date, but you must know the period. That's a close friend of mine who used to be a Muslim. When the period that he wanted to become born again Christian, for two, three weeks, he was hearing a voice, give your life to me, give your life to me. That voice was disturbing him until he went to a lady. I said, this is what I'm hearing. And that lady took him to church and he became born again Christian. He has given that testimony more than four or five to me that we are discussing. So when you have an encounter, it is recorded in you that you are transformed. You will know the time. You may not know the exact day, but you must know the period. You must know the circumstances. That's what we are talking today. What's your testimony of your encounter? What is my testimony of my encounter? That is one of the fruit of born again Christian. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, there we also say we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses that let them lay aside every weight and the sin which easily enacts us and let us run enduring the race that is set before us. We are the witnesses for the Spirit of the Lord. We must be able to say, This is the time. This is the period, this is the season that my life changed, that I became born again Christian. If you cannot say that testimony, we must go back to ourselves and check whether we are born again Christian or not, or we are church goer. This is the issue, because we necessarily we testify to us. If you don't know that God testified about you, then you are calling God a liar. That's what the book of God's John chapter 9, verse 9 to 10 says. Now, our testimony must be said. The passage that we read, we saw the testimony of Jeremiah, how we have an encounter with you. We talk about Isaiah, how he had an encounter with the Lord. I can describe four or five people I know that I give their own testimony about their encounter and how they become born again Christian. The book of First Timothy, chapter 6, verse 12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life, to which you were also called, and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. You see, you must confess that good confession in the presence of many witnesses. That's what we are saying. Your testimony about the day you are be reborn, the day you become born again Christian, must be something that comes to you naturally. They wake you up from the sleep, you must be able to say it. I will give very brief of my own testimony. I was aged between eight and nine. I started to see a lot of things that I could not understand. At that time, I can see things that other people will not see. I can hear things that other people could not hear. I did not know that was God was dealing with me. I was thinking that maybe I'm a witch. But I was thinking the way everything I was doing is to go and pray for people. I always will tell me, look at this person. This person is going to be sick. 
go and pray for him or her. I was doing that. I was doing that, but I was not sure. I could not even talk to my parents because in my culture, something like that, it is going to be looked at as if people forces using that on him. They will call us witch. You know, I was even calling myself a white witch because I didn't do anything bad, but I was seeing things. So until I was 16 years old, about 16 years old, let me step back a little bit. When I graduated from elementary school, what they call primary school, I could not go to high school for four and a half years because of the situation of my family being a polygamous house, which I don't have time to go through. I was not going to school for four and a half years. So in the fifth year, I got only one form to go to one school. If I could not go to that school, I will end up learning trade because that's the only option for me. So I was really determined to go to school. So I did the exam. 5,000 of us went for the exam. 500 of us was invited for interview. But when I read the letter of interview, I was totally broken. When I read the letter of interview, although 500 of us was invited, they were only going to take 66 of us. And I was about 17 years, 16 plus, I was almost going 17 years old. So I was really disturbed that I would not be taken because I was bigger than most of the ages at 12, 13 years old. So I was about three years older than those people that are going to the interview. So I was broken. I was really desperate. I was praying. And in the middle of the night, a elderly person came to me with a white beard, white everything about his hair was white. And he called me by my name, the name that my family called me. And he called me, oh, yeah, what is your problem? I narrated what I've narrated. And he said to me, when you just wake up, go and write a message about your best friend. And the day of interview, because of time, I cannot go into two the details. The day of the interview, exactly the principal of the school, they asked us to write an essay about my best friend. And I wrote that essay. I immediately I wrote it and degraded it. I didn't go for the interview. I was given the letter of admission. So at that moment, I knew that was a power beyond any power. That was a power beyond my father's power. That was a power beyond my mother's power. That was the period where I dictated my life to Jesus Christ. There's nothing. I don't ask for any favor from anybody. I put my heart at God's power that visited me. Then I knew that was the Holy Spirit that was guiding me. That's how I became born again Christian. So that's how I started the journey of being a born again Christian. What is your own testimony? I relive this story every day of my life because it was a transformative time for me. Because when I was already at the hand of my robe, nothing, I don't know what to do. At the age of 15, 16, I don't, have, I don't know anything. My parents and my mother were struggling, but my father has made up his mind that I should go and learn trade. But God, in his own mercy, sought it out for me. So that's how I become body again Christian. So what is your own story? What is my own story? So these are the issues that we need to know. And again, let us don't deceive ourselves. The next, Jesus said, I know my people, and my people hear my voice. He knows his people, and the people hear his voice. So let us not deceive ourselves. Let us not be considered that we you call yourself a born again Christian. God knows you. He knows where you are coming from. I know where you are going to. That's why in the book of John chapter 10, verse 14 to 16, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep. I am known by my own. And as the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep which are not of this fold, then also as I must bring, and they must hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. You see, you must hear from God, and God must hear from you. So I'm praying for all of us today that those of us who have not had an encounter with the Lord, who are church goers, as you are hearing my voice today, as I'm saying this word of exhortation, God will touch you. 
you will rededicate your life to God. You will accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and your Savior, and you will be saved. And those of us who are backsliding, who have known God, our testimony will be renewed. Let us your testimony be renewed. By be faithful to the one that called you. By faithful to the one that give you grace of salvation. We must be faithful for those who want to give us grace of salvation. The book of 4 John chapter 4, verse 12 to 16 says, No one has seen God anytime, but if you love one another, God abide with us. We must love one another. We must show love to each other. The grace of God will be sufficient for us. As we run this race of salvation, I pray that Lord will visit us. He will visit us. Those of us who have not known God, Lord, we visit you. Church go up. Those people are just going to church and they will not delay their life to God. I pray for you today. You will have an encounter. All the people I pray who are hearing my voice today, you don't know whether you are born again Christian. Holy Spirit will challenge you. And you will dedicate your life to God. God will give us testimony. We got the book of Hebrew chapter 11, verse 2. Say, by faith, the elder has good testimony. I pray for everyone hearing my voice today that you will have good testimony. Your testimony will be good. Your testimony of your encounter with the Lord, you will not forget it. You will not abandon your calling. You will not abandon the grace of salvation. I pray for everyone hearing my voice today that our elect will be sure, that our election will be sure. We will not be rejected and we will not be a signpost to heaven. We will be a partaker of heaven. We will not waste our time as a churchgoer, but as a born again Christian, that we do not people that they are served. God will strengthen us, God will visit us. I pray for a new revelation, a new understanding, a new grace for all of us who are a Christian, who bear the name of a Christian. Whether you are born again or not, I pray that you will have a new encounter, you will have a new revelation, a new understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, at this point in this word of exhortation, I want to invite you. Prophet Isaiah said, in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, it's a prince of peace. If you have not had an encounter with the prince of peace, this is time to give your life to our Lord Jesus Christ by confessing your sin and by accepting Jesus Christ as the Lord and your Savior. And you shall be saved. And then you need to be baptized and then receive Holy Spirit. Make sure you talk to your pastor and you'll be baptized. Thank you for listening to today's message. If you'd like to learn more about this ministry, please visit grministry.org or call us on plus one six one seven four four nine zero six four six. To support this ministry, you can subscribe and follow our channel or give at grministry.org slash support. Stay blessed.